Listen, it's been a little while. It was a bit of a delay, but I want you guys to remember where we are right now. Double overtime, map four, blowouts to start this series, and Vertigo delivered. Mouse Sports are fighting tooth and nail, and right now they're trailing. It's the second half of a second OT, and we don't know what comes next, but what we know is we are here right now. So focus forward and sink in because Astralis want to close this. They do not want to let Mouse Sports take it to a fifth one. And Glaive, well, he's going to begin. It's towards mid that this first fight falls. Oh, we've already seen some new adjustments here. And again, Dupree, he is on that second off. A shot, a chance is missed. He'll flash his way back, but the opening kill will haunt Mel Sports. How will they follow up with this? Glaive has moved in to defend against me. They have an idea, it's coming. BMAS whip back and denies device, and this opens up the other site. Glaive, they don't know that he's actually moved this way around, and it'll offer him up a frag. He's going back over towards A to spot the cross, and Zipix, he's moved into the lower ramp. Oh, they don't check fast enough. It's an immediate trade kill. Back to the 2v2, but Rops is oh my God. left. And if you thought device, or rather Glaive going over the box was one thing, well, Rops takes that exact same path like a hunter. He is on the trail of his prey, but Glaive may take one with him if he peeks out far enough. He oh. knows his flank is compromised, but where has Rops got off to? Right behind you! And Dupree? Well, now it's gotta be that 1v2 where Mouse Sports are gonna tie this game at 20. Holy hell, he's getting called out, man. Dupree, he's gotta come up the ramp. He's walking. They know that could be an empty Molotov landing in his direction, and the smoke down means he could get on it. The peak will oh. come, but the shot is in. And now he's sticking this. Oh my oh. god, the shots are being Another missed. Chance. No he way he actually it gets it. He One away. It again. One away. Astralis could, lo could just finish the game now. Off of that, Dupree hits the shot, sticks it, and again. Shots missed on the defuse. This time it's Rops. Who's gonna be next? The amount of moments that have come down to these sprays on players defusing when they have no other choice. They cannot let that break them. A near mirrored image of the reason oh. we even got to second OT. Oh my God, the setup slave, he's spotting this. Oh, he gets some spam damage and three players down to nearly 50. Oh, Off nothing. Miss. Middle of the middle of the map is cracked open. Glaive, he'll get a very important kill to establish control. They sit out here in the open now and Glaive could potentially wrap around. Dupree is back so to his old sound. antics. He makes so much sound on that movement. Dupree, he's gonna deliver another kill. They're starting to stutter inside of middle. Glaive, he is just beneath them. And that bomb carrier, well, that's gonna be on Frozen. And he's down here in the dungeons. And Zipex, the king, drops him down to 34 HP. Every single player left for Mouse Sports now at near half health or less. Talk about pressure. Okay, mid round situation. Rops moving up to the A ramp. Oh. Zipix, he finds Frozen finally. The bomb carrier, he comes in from a different position. But Zipnix, he, he smoked this off. Right there, right now. Oh, he'll ask for the help. They've got the bomb. Mouse Sports, they are stranded. They are desperate. Oh. And they have no way to get through this smoke. Not in time. They would have to walk through and find the most ridiculous kills that you have ever seen. Astralis here in double OT. They've got just beam ass back by the forklift, and he is so desperate, he has nothing to offer them. They scramble, and they leave him in his own demise. It took two overtimes here on this fourth map, but Astralis have done it. Lower the drawbridge, open the gate. The Kings have returned to winning ways. Astralis are your DreamHack Masters Winter Grand Champ.
Return to the in game leadership role signals a return to that championship form we know we love and we come to miss from Astralis. Whether you meet them online or on land, they are going to be ready for you because today's victory it signals the renaissance for the Danish side. Do you think this victory, boys, would have been possible if Glaive wasn't calling the shot? I don't think so. I think what we saw from Glaive was something magical at this event. Uh, we saw so many rounds that were called that were absolutely masterfully called, and it wasn't something that just rarely happened. It felt like he was taking over entire games with his calling. Sometimes I didn't look at the scoreboard or who had what kills. It was just Glaive and his mind working. And you've got to give props to Mouse Sports as well. The young individuals on that team showing up. Carrigan leading by example. And BMAS, for me, he has come on leaps and bounds in the last month alone. Yeah, even the fact that Mouse Sports were even able to challenge in this Grand Finals goes to tell you what level they're playing at. Think of Astralis' other victories. Two O's over top of all the other challengers versus them. So this showing from Mouse Sports, it wasn't even what we expected. That win on Inferno is something to be proud about in and of itself. Nuke, so close that this could have actually been Astralis taking us to a fifth map, not securing that Grand Champ spot. So just an awesome showing from Mouse Sports and an even better calling from Glaive. All the pieces really showed up for them tonight. And Versco, I mean, we were just 3v3, 2v2. And then the defuse situations, it was down to the wire every single round. Yeah, it was absolutely clutch plays. And when we got to OT, playbook was almost out the window. They started having to do things they weren't doing earlier in the game. Whatever it took, the scrappiness from Kerrigan, um, the audacity from from, from Astralis to continue forward on the A ramp late into the round over and over again. They just had to do some of the same stuff and try to make it look different. Mouse Sports then. We'll be talking to Astralis shortly, but I, I do want to talk a little bit more about them because this is such a, a positive result for them. It's a step in the right direction. I know that you guys are going to be casting them next week uh, when they head to the Blast Ball Finals as well. They seem to be a one to watch now as we head into the end of the year, just like they were in 2019. Yeah, this was just a huge moment for them, right? Their biggest grand final, final match, whatever you want to call it, in how long? I can't even remember the last time that they've had something like this. And for them to get this far into the tournament and then take it to Astralis in this way, handing them one of their one in 13 losses on Inferno, their hallmark map on their map pick, that really woke us up and showed us that these this is a team that is really here to play. Kerrigan's firing off. All the others are coming up. BMAS gets his first clutch on wreck. I mean, this, there's so many cool things. First ace, excuse me. There are so many moments here for Mouse Sports. Do you think, or did you ever think, that Mouse actually might go their separate ways? Because there was a point, probably just after the player break, where I thought it was all over. Sure. Well, well Chris J was never going to leave. He doesn't, right? He's he just goes to the bench sometimes. Yeah, but then he just comes. to come back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we didn't really know what the, what the future looked for them, right? The thing with Mouse Sports is that they have this, this, this trio of young talent. And these aren't the only three talented young players in Counter-Strike, but they are three of the hottest names. And with Frozen really kind of stepping up alongside Rops, right? Uh, like, the second star, it was really about can Kerrigan do it with a third party? Can he really put BMAS to that next level? And can he himself, you know, regain uh, a, a form that justifies him staying on a roster? I mean, Kerrigan is, is invaluable at this point. It's been proven. And, and so I would hope they stay together because they are the only team at this event. And this event was stacked with 16 very real top teams that took it to Astralis um, and, and did it on Inferno of all places as well. So hopefully, hopefully, Frankie. We don't get to award an MVP officially. But if you had to choose a player, who would it be, Launders? Oh my god, for the whole event. I think it would have to be Device. I, I think Device just showed a monster mode for this entire event. Uh, the maps that he put together, even when he got 20 kills, the amount of impact kill he got, how many opening op kills he got on Vertigo, but then on Train didn't get any and still was getting two to three kills around. 
just in this final alone. I mean, Device, it, he just, again, he never gets his flowers, but he makes it look so easy every single goddamn day in the server. On a team that we talk about because of Glaive and the calling and how evenly stacked they are, Device still stands out from the rest. He has maxed out on accolades in terms of team results as well as individual results, and you see it. All of his shots come in, and he gets them because he makes them look easy. He's always there when you don't expect to see him. He's the guy who's never flashed. He's the guy who's so consistent, and he's the guy who pulls out clutches too. Scotty, would you agree? I would have to agree that Device is right there, right there with him. And, you know, if Mouse Sports had taken this series, then then I think that Rops absolutely deserves it because Rops was one of those key pieces to the turnaround on Inferno. Um, and if you had to choose anybody else from Astralis even, then, you know, I, I got to give credit to Glaive. He, he's right back there. He's right back at the helm, and he is, he is really pulling the strings perfectly at the moment. So many good calls, so many good moments from Astralis. Uh, very much so back to, you know, tournament winning form. It feels, you know, it's not, it's not as convincing as it once was, but it feels like we are right on the cusp of them returning to something special. So Rops, he's a bona fide superstar now. He is undoubtedly a bona fide superstar. He did not choke in this final. He showed incredible resilience, especially there on Vertigo, where he was bullied every single round in the second half. And this is something Glaive does. They'll take your best player, they'll isolate him, and they'll constantly attack that site, and they'll figure out how to make it so they have no confidence left. He did it to Twist, he tried to do it to Robs, and here, Robs, he just played more and more confidently, no matter how badly it got. And then he started putting together two kills, three kills. This is part of the reason it got to OT in the first place, it was all because of Robs, and he just has, an, he has unshakable bones in his body. Like, the performances we saw from him throughout this event show us he is just a cut above every single other team. They're all bots to him. You coming up the call, you better not miss. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we are waiting for Astralis. Hopefully we'll get them in the server soon. I think they have a few things to obviously celebrate here. I'm just trying to think about what we've got to the end of the year. I believe Astralis are going to be coming to IAM Global Challenge. I don't think, sadly, Mouse are. Yeah, course, they're just yeah. a flurry of results for Mouse recently, right? Like, they're just now, they're getting into the, you know, potential for the, uh, to be in the top six for the Pro Tour. They're in the plan now, I think, with the amount of points that they've gotten off of the second place victory um, on top of the 30 grand and just making it to a grand final. So some of the accumulation of points and, and prizes and stuff like that that some other teams have had at the beginning of this year, they haven't been a part of that. But from here on out into next year, they're off on the right foot. And unfortunately for Mouseports, because they didn't get the full 400 points from the finals today, they haven't made it into a direct spot for the road to Katowice, but they should be in with a chance still of making it because a result like this means that they may be taking one of those wildcard spots. If if they go far enough up the ESL World Rankings, potentially we will be seeing them in Katowice next year. And we're definitely going to be seeing Astralis, Na'Vi, G2, Heroic, Vitality. It is gonna be such an epic event. We also know that we have Evil Geniuses and Furia confirmed for North America and the team formerly known as Chaos, as they will be at the time, and Team Liquid have booked themselves play-in spots as well. So there is so much on the line here. There are so many amazing teams already confirmed. Katowice, so no matter what happens with that event, it's gonna be an incredibly special one. And to be honest, boys, so has this event. For me, I just, I think we've had such exceptional games with Counter-Strike. We've had our underdog stories in Godsent and Gambit. And then we've had our heroes return to form. Now Sports, just one of the best teams to be a fan of. And Astralis, the team that always, always plays to their best. Even when the chips are down, we know that they've had some issues. We know that the players have had to go away and they've had to struggle with your sixth player, your seventh player, Pimp, running an active campaign to try and get on the Astralis lap, like lineup. Maybe one day it will happen, Maybe Pimp. I don't want to crush your dreams because I know you're doing North American Counter-Strike in a bit. Yeah. But we've just seen so much action from the last seven days. Do you have any favorite moments, Saunders? Yeah, I think, I mean, first of all, this is grand finals because it was supposed to be a 3-1, 3-0, something like that. And and um, for, for Mouse Sports to bring it this close, again, again, I don't even know the last time that they were in a grand final. So the fact that we saw this result in what should have been a stomp today is something special. And also just the fact that Astralis look like they're actually creating the conversation for like, are they back in 2018 form? And, and as soon as we get an interview, of course, we can talk about, you know, do they feel like they're getting back to that level? Because it feels like they're close to it. Scorny, lean in here. Yeah. Look at these teams I... that made it to the playoffs. Yep. 
Any any favorites here? Any any memories this is stirring up for you? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a I'm a bit of a sucker for them. Cloud Nine. We had we had Counter Strike history made by Floppy with two back to back one versus fives. Um, you know, something that again players don't even get to achieve too often in their careers, let alone to get two of them in 24 hours. That to me is just absolutely stunning. Um, the underdog stories of Godsent and Gambit. But I'm going to stop because that phone's ringing. It's time to talk about the champion story because we're now joined by Astralis and they are absolutely worth the wait. <laughs> Bubsky, Majis, Zipnik and Dupree, thank you so much for joining us. And this is your first event back with Glaive in that in-game leadership role. Uh, Dupree, does that make this win all the more special? Message <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, it does. I mean, it's, it, it feels good to be back playing with the original roles. Not saying, well, a big shout out to Magis for doing real well throughout the, the stand in of Glaive. But I think uh, feeling that uh, Glaive coming back to the game, really leading role, is just everything starts falling into place. So it's really good. And even though we started off the tournament with a loss to Godsend, and we were a little bit shocked by that, it was just really great to feel that we can bounce back and yeah, win the tournament. So I couldn't be happier.